Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Bit Workshop. This is the second video that I'm showing of the Festal KS60 Mitre Saw. And in this video, we're going to actually put it through its paces. If you looked at the first video, you'd have seen I'd have described the tool in detail and shown you how to set it up. Now, the setup is as follows. Uh, because I've only got this saw for a short period of time, I have just screwed it with ordinary wood screws uh, through the four feet down into the top of the MFT3. I've got connected at the back a 36 millimeter hose and that goes to the brand new Festal CTM26, which is here, which I'm reviewing in a separate video. I've got the extractor set on auto. I'm using a 36 millimeter hose and therefore this is set on 36 and I've got my speed up to full. And that's the saw connected just there. And now I'm just going to get the saw ready for action. Now people get worked up about the flatness across here, so I'm going to just demonstrate how flat or not flat it is. Um, I can see, probably difficult for the camera, that it's flat across here with absolutely no problem at all. It's flat there. Uh, there is enough room there to get a piece of paper under just. If I move it to this side, uh, it's, there's a little bit of a gap there and certainly the paper goes through there, as does uh, this just, and this is a quarter of a millimetre thick. And the same there. So there's a, a little bit of variation, uh, but I don't think those uh, measurements are enough to worry about at this stage. Uh, just one thing to note, because of the angle finder, which uh, the way it works with this machine, it actually sits down into a, a very small recess just here. Uh, if you were cutting a very short piece of wood, uh, then uh, the end of it wouldn't be quite supported in this area, uh, because this is slightly lower uh, than the uh, metal on either side. To check uh, that these rear fences uh, were in line, uh, and they are, they, ab they are absolutely perfect. Now I'm going to be cutting wood for these first few demos, and if you look on the right hand side of the uh, motorhead, uh, there is a label here which uh, gives you an indication of the sort of speeds uh, that you should be using for different materials. And it, it gives you those in the calibration of 1 to 6 for the speed control, which is very handy. Also down the left hand side is an indication of what the, the, those 1 to 6 mean in terms of actual RPM. And I have a chap in Australia uh, to thank for this, so as we say in England, good on you. Um, and his name is Dave Stanton and he's produced two absolutely fantastic videos about this saw already. Uh, I'm going to start with a piece of ash uh, and this is uh, 60 millimetres uh, deep. Uh, which is theoretically the maximum depth of cut of the saw. I actually believe this saw can cut a little bit deeper than that. My very first cut of the saw. Uh, cut through uh, very nice and cleanly. And the first thing I'm going to check is how square it is. Uh, there is that cut. This way too. Absolutely perfect. And frankly, that just goes to show that uh, uh, put, putting a straight edge across here isn't the way uh, to really judge it. It's do a cut and see how good the cut is. Now, in the interest of checking out the dust collection, I've got a piece of uh, 4 by 2 here. I've put a blue cloth at the back and I'll bring the camera around to the back after I've done a nice lot of cuts. I'll look first of all around the front of the machine. You see some little bits of dust there, nothing of any great shakes. Uh, now I do hope that when I was doing that cutting uh, that you could see there was no uh, dust in the air. And what we're looking at here are chippings. And there are more on the right hand side than there are on the left. Now I lost count of uh, the number of cuts we did. Uh, there seems to be quite a few. Now this is the W60 fine tooth blade, 60 teeth, uh, and it's very much the equivalent of what I use in my 
KS120. Uh, this is the sort of blade that I would keep for all my cross cutting and I think we're going to see a considerable improvement in that cut quality compared to the universal 36 tooth blade. Uh, whilst we're on this side, here's the spindle lock. Uh, on this side, I've got my finger on that uh, locking mechanism. Uh, remember, it's a left-hand thread, by the way. And in goes the new blade. Note that the, uh, the writing and the colors uh, are on the outside here. So once that's, it, that's in place, uh, look at this uh, locking washer. It's uh, got a uh, couple of flats on it which match uh, the shaft there. That goes on and then the screw goes back in. You'll feel the shaft lock button go in when it actually finds one of the locking positions, just like you have on a, a router or uh, other similar tools. So uh, that's nice and tight. Now for this next cut I've got another piece of ash but it's a lot denser, it's a lot better quality than the first piece I was using. I've got a face edge marked and I've got a face side marked and I'm going to make sure those are the two that I'm referencing on the machine. I'll deal with the cut quality first, that is much better, very nice indeed. We're now doing square again and so the first one is this way. Okay, that is perfect to be absolutely spot on for me. And this way, I can see it's absolutely spot on. And I'll try and arrange it so uh, it's better for you as well. Uh, and I've got a, a, a wider uh, piece here. It's got a straight edge at the back. And what I want to be checking is this angle here. And I hope you can see that that is absolutely super. Right, I think it's time that we took this uh, into angle territory now. Now for a bit of fun, well, we'll make something. It's not glued together, but you can see that's pretty good. It must be pretty close to being spot on 60 degrees. I'm now going to switch uh, to the uh, laminate cutting uh, blade. Now this laminate blade has got the red marking here. I've looked on the label on the other side that says between three and five for the speed. So I've actually set it on four. Now, unfortunately, I have no uh, laminate flooring left over. I stopped uh, using it about uh, 10 years ago. But I have got some Formica finished chipboard, uh, which uh, is a, a substitute, is the best substitute that I can make. So there we are. Uh, the issue to watch here is how clean uh, the cut is on the underside, uh, bearing in mind there's no sacrificial uh, zero clearance insert underneath here at all. And I don't know if you are able to see just how clean that under edge is. It's absolutely first class. I'll try it the other way up. And there's that absolutely perfect, and I mean absolutely perfect edge. Right, I've got the aluminium blade in and I've set uh, the speed uh, to speed four because that's about mid-range of the allowable speeds. I've got a piece of aluminium angle in here. I've secured it from both ends and I've disconnected my extractor. And the reason for that is I don't have a spark guard on the extractor and so I'm not going to risk cutting metal using the extractor. So I'm just going to cut it and then I'll clean up afterwards. I've got eye protection and ear protection as always of course. That's an absolutely perfect cut. 
It was effortless. It was as though I was cutting a piece of softwood. That is absolutely beautiful. I've never cut aluminium before. Well, only very thin bits with my, my other saw, but uh, uh, not a piece as thick as this. Now, there's just one more thing I want to show you. Um, a lot of people get sort of uh, obsessed with uh, zero clearance inserts. Uh, I, I'm not obsessed by it, but I do have them on my uh, large Capex 120. Uh, but for this one, it's not quite so simple, and frankly, it might not be quite so necessary. But if you do find yourself in a situation when you want to do zero clearance, uh, this is what I would recommend. I've glued up two pieces of ordinary Medite MDF, good quality MDF. And they're just glued, there's no screws, uh, and it's a butt joint all the way along there. I've then uh, fixed this onto uh, the bed of the capex. I've set the capex for a trenching cut. Now I'll lower this down, and the trenching cut is such that it's just deep enough so it will cut into this corner here. And once you've done that, uh, you can then use this uh, block of MDF as your zero clearance insert. And here we go. As we look under here, you can see that is the most magnificently clean edge. Now remember that when trenching, uh, you need a distance piece at the back here, otherwise you end up with a curved uh, finish to the trench. And Fest will recommend 40 millimeters. I've set uh, this to the trenching position, which is forward. Uh, I've uh, rotated it to adjust my trenching depth, and I'll now make a trenching cut. Well, I have to say that the trenching capability of this machine is superior to its big brother, the KS120. And the reason for that is that it's a little bit stiffer here. Uh, with the 120, it's possible to put extra downward pressure and you end up uh, very easily, if you're not careful, uh, with an uneven trench. But that trench is perfect. Now because of the 60 degree, 60 degree mitre capability, the amount of supporting surface on either side of the table is actually quite limited, uh, certainly compared to its big brother, the, the KS120. And so you do have to be careful when you're placing wood on here that it's properly supported and if necessary, clamp it in position. Now I heard someone say that uh, the KS60 uh, is very slow to come to a halt, slower than the KS120. I don't believe that. I'm going to start them both at the same time and I'm going to let go of the trigger at the same time. I can see absolutely no difference at all. What is interesting is they're the same height. Well, there we go. Now, uh, it's only just been placed there, but the heights are right. Um, you could build this mitre station. Uh, you would have to just have a little tiny addition here to support that front piece. And the plans are free. <laughs> well, I've done my best in this one video to show off the operation and capability of the KS60. There are a couple of criticisms I've got. Um, one is I absolutely detest uh, this little uh, baby screw clamp. Uh, it, it's not terribly well made. It's, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't deserve ha to have the name Festal on it. Uh, but there we go. I don't like that type of clamp anyway. Maybe that's the real reason. I showed that there was a slight discrepancy in the level across the machine. And I hope that by doing those demonstration cuts and showing them uh, with my square, uh, that you'll agree that the, that, that slight uh, variation across there is really of no consequence. I think the shadow line is perfectly okay, uh, provided you're not trying to work at great accuracy, you know, to within half a millimeter, that's fine. It might be awkward if you've got a really big lump of wood and you're trying to lower uh, the motor head down a bit to get a clearer shadow line, yet at the same time 
what, with the other hand, trying to move a big lump of wood. That might be tricky. I, I'm, I was very impressed by the, the motor and the drive mechanism. Uh, I don't think it's excessively noisy. Uh, I think it starts and stops uh, pretty much on a par with my KS120. And uh, overall, I think it's an extremely well-made machine. Now, if you want to have a look at uh, this, this is that triangle I made. The glue has now gone off. I'll bring it in uh, as close as I can so you can inspect it. I have used a tiny bit of filler. Uh, I'm not sure which one it is. Uh, yes, I am. I think it's at the top of this one. It was just a tiny bit. But then yeah, I think most of us will probably use a tiny bit of filler to finish a job off before uh, showing it to a customer. So there we are. There's a triangle. So if you want to go and make road signs, uh, that means uh, give way. Uh, and that means warning uh, and so on. Well, there we go. You can make road signs now. I'd never cut aluminium before, uh, or certainly not the, the bigger pieces like that. I cut a small bit of rod once uh, using my capex. Uh, but uh, now I'm absolutely convinced that uh, I'm going to get myself an aluminium blade. I'm going to really enjoy it. Now, I'd just like to remind you uh, that uh, this kit is on loan from Festool UK. It's going back to Festool UK. They're going to send it on to another reviewer uh, any day now. Uh, and I'm grateful to Festival for letting me have a play with this and for allowing me to be able to show it to you. And of course, the good news is that if you get the plans for my mitre station, you can put one of these in it and it fits. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye bye.